I see a, a really important fork in the road for the world. Do we as a world population want to have a set of norms, a, a set of civilized principles that allow humanity to tap into the potential of the digital revolution? Or do we want to just let things happen as they are? And for me, the High Level Panel is an opportunity to set out a roadmap for how we can build that cooperation in this era that so desperately needs it. So what's happening is that technology is moving so fast, it's changing our lives so quickly. Uh, and on the other hand, organizations, international organizations, governments, institutions, haven't been able to catch up with the speed at which things are, are changing. So we're starting to see problems arise. There's a huge potential with technology, but also we're starting to see that there's also problems of privacy, all sorts of, of issues that have come up lately. The digital or transformation is changing whole things, as you know, economic systems, social systems, employment, education, touches upon their human right and data issues. In a world of technologies that are so fast-paced and you know today's vogue technology is not the same tomorrow, meets a very interesting tension in a world where you have to get perspectives from all, all sorts of people from all walks of life about how this applies to their reality. If you do not have a cooperation, we probably you accentuate the divides, you can accentuate the inequalities across countries. So it's necessary to think together about how you can mitigate the potential problems that the technology can bring. One country cannot um, neither reap the full benefits nor handle the consequences or challenges that follow those. Uh, if we isolate ourselves. And to face those risks and challenges, international cooperation is crucial. And when I say cooperation, I mean it on a national level, on a regional level, on international level. And all the institutions worldwide, the governments and even companies are, with, are coming with mechanisms uh, from an analog world. So this transition is very difficult. We must have new approaches, this is multi-stakeholder, and we must have much more multidisciplinary discussions. When business talks to the government, talks to NGOs, or talks to uh, civil societies or academia, we actually see the world very differently. Um, you could see if we're able to understand each other and work together, it could help us come up with very powerful outcomes. You have a lot of uh, government leaders who come from a generation where this is all new to them and they, it's, it's um, frightening or it's confusing, so they just avoid it altogether. So when you bring in different stakeholders, we can educate each other. There are panel members who are, who are actual policy makers and then there are those of us who are the ones affected by those policies. So it was nice to have a chance for both of us to, to share our concerns and our hopes, and um, I think yeah, a lot of good will come out of that. The existence of this high-level panel shows that at least some uh, people, including the UN Secretary General, uh, is trying to make us move in the right direction. Uh, what is most interesting about the way in which this panel was organized is that it chose language which was extremely broad. It didn't talk about internet at all, it talked about digital cooperation. I think that was a powerful and insightful choice because the digital world is extremely broad. Our panel, by planning or by luck, 
is operating at a very, very crucial time. We have seen in the last few months uh, a serious degradation in the trust by the citizenry in the digital operators and in the digital realm in general. There's fear that I haven't seen before that is now across a broad swath of users, educated users, non-educated users, developing countries, developed countries. And I think that new lack of trust requires thoughtful mechanisms of cooperation. I think the internet and all of the, the governance systems built around it show us a glimpse of what multi-stakeholder partnership should be about. You know, we are not going to promote cooperation in the 21st century by using 20th century institutions that only have one actor, say the state, involved. If we're going to get the most out of these transformations, we have to involve everyone, nation states, big private companies, and most importantly, I would argue, citizens, so that we put people and our interests at the heart of digital cooperation, at the heart of governing these new systems. I think it's a call to action, it's time to do something and time to actually engage more broadly, uh, both as academics and as engineers. Engineers need to talk to politicians, we need to, uh, academics need to talk to the broader community and break down the walls, this idea of the expert. Um, between you know, universities and the uh, rest of the world really needs to end. A new form of collaboration needs to emerge. Whatever we do, uh, we, it, it has to be a persistent process and not simply a set of discrete actions. And the reason for that is that we know already that digital systems will evolve. They have over the past 80 years and they will continue to do so. Which means that we can't have a static set of solutions. We have to have both institutions, practices, norms that are flexible and adaptable and can treat new situations arising that we didn't anticipate.